YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Peyton and I'm just a girl with a camera who likes to share my stories and my life with you guys. So if that's something you're interested in, please hit that subscribe button. Give me a big uh, thumbs up and <laughs> leave some comments down below. I filmed this intro 85 times now, so hopefully it's okay now. I'm not filming it again. <laughs> so let's get right into the video. <laughs> So today's video is about me moving out when I was 13 years old. I lived with my mom and my stepdad until I was 13 and then I moved out and moved in with my grandmother. Um, so I figured I'd tell this story. It kind of goes along with my um, other story times. And uh, so sit back, grab some popcorn, maybe a little glass of wine and hang out and listen to my story time. So when I was growing up, we did a lot of moving around. We moved around from um, house to house, apartments, um, motels, people's houses, people's um, apartments, uh, living on like someone's couch, all over the place. Well, my mom had told me the last time that we moved that this would be it. That we weren't going to move again, that this is where I was going to be, I wasn't going to have to live in a motel ever again, and that they're finally getting their lives together. Well, dumb little 13 year old me was like, okay mom, I believe you. Even though she's let me down a million times before, but we're not going to go there. So picture this, I'm 13 years old, I literally just started my freshman year of high school. I believe we were still in September at this point. Um, and I... Life is already hard, right? You're starting school, you're starting high school like that as a freshman. You're going into this whole new world, hoping that you still carried on the friends from middle school and you're entering the gates of high school, which is like, oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm starting high school and then I am just having a good old time. They were telling me about Freshman Friday, and I was like, what's that? And they're like, all the seniors pick on the freshmen, and I thought it was a real thing. They also tried to tell me that there was a pool in the roof, and gullible asked me, believed it all. Uh, so I was nervous going into my high school year, but my home life was sort of stable at the moment. We lived in this one apartment for a few months now, and it was really kind of longer than we've ever lived anywhere else. And everything was kind of going okay. Um, so the last thing I expected was to get an eviction notice on our apartment. So we lived above this uh, bodega. Um, it was like so nice because you could literally just go right downstairs and go to the corner store because we lived right on top of it. And we like the people in there would give us free food all the time because they knew who we were. And uh, we'd go hang out with our friends and, and walk the neighborhood and everything. It was just a nice area for me to live in. I have family that lives right down the street. It was nice. Um, I can't really remember if my parents had a job at the time. Um, so my mom and my stepdad never really held a job down. Something would always happen. Um, they would be caught stealing, uh, drugs, anything along those lines. Something would always happen to where they would get fired or they would quit or something along those lines. So I can't remember if they actually had a job at the time or if they were actually paying any bills. But I know that my cousin was living with us with his um, girlfriend and her son. And I'm like, okay, so we have literally all these people in a two-bedroom apartment. How are we not paying bills? But apparently we weren't. So I go to school one day. And I have a good day at school or whatever. It's a pretty normal day. Nothing crazy happening. I come home um, and my mom, like everyone's there. My mom is upset and I'm like, what's going on? My mom literally dreaded telling me that we were going to be evicted because she knew my reaction. Like she told, like she promised me up and down that we weren't going to go through this again. And then we did. And I've been let down a million times by her, but I think this is where I really started to grow a pair of balls and just be like, I gotta start living my life. Even though I'm 13, I have to do what's best for me. At 13, I had such a different mindset than a normal 13 year old because of everything that I've gone through and because I had to grow up so fast. So, she sits me down, she tells me that we're going to be evicted and we're going, and we're living in a motel again. And I'm like, oh, hell 
no, <laughs> okay? Um, I'm not sharing a bed with my brother and sister. I already have to share a room with them. And I'm not sharing one room with five people and one bathroom in a dirty ass motel. It's just like not something I wanna do, sorry. I don't know why you keep wanting to do it, but it's not something I wanna do. So she's like, we're gonna go uh, live in a motel for a little bit until we can get back on track on everything that we need to do. Um, you can either come with us or you can go stay with Graham for, you know, a little while. And I'm like, yeah, bye, Graham, come get me. So Graham is my mom's mom. She was like, she's like, not was, she's still alive. <laughs> she like is my person. She took care of me a lot of my life. She, I was constantly sleeping over her house. Um, she was buying me stuff, like making sure that we had Christmas most years, buying us new school clothes and shoes and groceries and, and all this stuff that, you know, a parent would do. But I guess when your daughter doesn't do her job, I guess you just have to step in. So I called my grandma up and I said, you know, I told her this situation and I said, I, I'm literally crying and I'm like, I don't want to go live in a hotel again. I just, it's not even, I'm sorry, motel, motel, not even a hotel, a motel. I don't want to go live in a motel again. You know, I can't stand it. I can't stand my stepdad. Like, it's just not something that I want to do. And then, um, she was like, okay, I'll come get you. And she just lived in a house with her husband at the time. Um, it was literally a four bedroom house. And I think my, my uncle did live there too at the time. Um, yeah, so she came and she packed all my stuff up and my mom literally constantly told me, this is not a forever thing. You will be coming back with me <laughs> when we have an apartment. And I just said, mm -hmm. yeah, just like you told me that this wasn't gonna happen again, right? So I got my mom telling me this isn't going to be a forever thing that I will be coming back home with her. And then I got my grandmama in my other ear like, you can stay as long as you want. So I'm um, naturally like, I'm not going back home. I'm staying with my grandma. So my mom's condition was I could go stay with my grandma, but I would have to go see her on the weekends, spend the weekends with her. And in my head, I'm like, no, I still don't want to do that. But at least I'll be able to be away from them for as long as I can be. Um, and my grandma actually, she still lived in the same area as I did and she worked for the transportation company. So I was able to just hop on a bus without being like getting in trouble or anything where I would actually just ride in with her because the transportation company was in the same parking lot as the high school. So most days I'd just ride in with her, wait in the car, like the 10, 15 minutes that it was different. So I'd go into the office with her before the first bell rang and then I'd go into the high school. <laughs> Um, so the school thing wasn't, it was a major thing for me because I didn't want my high school, like, people to know that I was living in a motel. Like now I'm starting to form real friendships, relationships. I don't need them to know that I come from a scummy family who lives in dirty ass motels. So it's just. I didn't want that. That was me being embarrassed by my life, like by my home life when I should have just kind of embraced it and been like, yeah, this is how I grew up, grew up. I'm not proud of it, but that's why I am who I am. And I don't, I don't regret it now. I just wish that I would have embraced it more and been more comfortable talking about it, but it is what it is. So anyways, I'm like, whatever, mom, I'll come see you on the weekends. It's not a big deal. I'll call you, whatever. So I go pack up all my stuff, get my guinea pig, and I go and I go and um, stay with my grandma. And I remember when I like first walked in, my grandma, I don't think she had said anything to my grandpa about it. And she was just like, Peyton's going to stay here for a little while. The only thing is, is that she has a guinea pig. <laughs> my grandpa was like not a fan of pets at all. Um, but you know, he let it swing, so that was nice. 
Um, so I moved in. I was sleeping in my uncle's room because he had started dating this woman. And so he was gone most of the time. Uh, so I was sleeping there, you know, going to school, kind of acting like everything was normal. And then like the weekends would come and I would go right back into my like little attitude, annoying state because I didn't want to go to a motel to like, it's not like we ever did anything. We would, I would just be there to be in their presence. And then it was like boring to me. I didn't want to be hanging out at a motel on the weekends while I'm a freshman in high school. Like I want to be hanging out with my friends. I want to be, you know, doing what a normal teenager should do, not hanging out in a motel. Um, so it just kind of was a problem all from the beginning. And so then I remember, I believe it was like Mother's Day. No, it wasn't Mother's Day. I think it was like my mom's birthday or something, something along the lines, maybe my birthday because our birthdays are close. Something where I was just going to go and surprise her and, and stay there for the weekend when I wasn't like supposed to. Well, so we show up, right? My grandma takes me and um, I'm like knocking on the hotel door. I'm like, hello, hello. I'm like trying to call my mom. I'm calling and texting. Literally nothing. I was getting no response, no text back, no call back, no nothing. No one's answering the door. I'm like, hello, knocking on the door. And then the um, cleaning lady walked by and she was like, no one's, no one's there, honey. And I was like, what do you mean no one's here? And she's like, nobody is in that room. And I said, girl, my family is in this room. Okay, I was just here last weekend. They're in here. And she was like, no, they left on Monday. And I was like, they left? What do you mean they left? She's like, they packed up their stuff and they left because they weren't like paying a bill or because they didn't have any more money or whatever it was, but they had left the motel without telling me. I didn't get a simple text, hey, this is where we were going. Hey, just letting you know that we don't, we're not at that hotel anymore. I didn't get a call, nothing. Okay, so you can imagine my anger. I was angry, I was upset, like I was pissed off, everything. I'm like, how can you move on me and not tell me and then expect me to not get upset. It was just like mind boggling. So we leave and I'm like kind of crying because at this point I still care a little bit. And I'm like, hey, you know, that was a little fucked up that they just kind of bounced on me and didn't say anything. Um, my grandma at this point is fuming, okay? <laughs> so she calls, I'm pretty sure she leaves my mom like a, a message, a voice message, okay? like telling her like, you know, all types of shit. Like you you got your daughter here crying now and how dare you do that, move on her. She was coming to surprise you and you're not even there. And uh, so moral of the story is don't surprise anyone. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I had eventually gotten contact with her. She had called me and she's like, what's up? Like, like nothing, nothing even happened. And I'm like, you moved on me. I'm like crying and I'm telling her all this, you know, how I'm feeling. And she's like, well, you weren't supposed to come this weekend. I said, that's not the point. The point is, is that you packed your shit and you left and you didn't tell me that you were going somewhere. How, like, what if something happened? You didn't just answer all the texts and the calls and, and none of that. When I, and you didn't, you're not at the hotel. So what if something happened to me? or you know something bad had happened you were literally nowhere to be found and my grandma's going off on her on the phone she's like she doesn't even want to speak to you and then i finally just said fuck you i'm not coming back i can't believe you did that to me and i'm staying here with my grandma and i never left my grandma's house again <laughs> we did cut we did <laughs> get over it and well not over it but like i kind of moved on and I did go see her um, some weekends after that, but our relationship was never the same. And from there, I just kind of grew more and more hatred towards my stepdad. And that just kind of estranged me and my mom too. Um, so I did go and hang out on some weekends. I did go on some holidays. And then eventually I was just like, 
I'm done coming here. I don't want to be around here, like all this negative energy. I don't want to be around toxicity. Like this isn't what I want for me and I'm happy at my grandmom's. And so I'm going to stay at my grandmom's and that was my choice. And she didn't really do anything about it because genuinely I think that she didn't care that I left because it was literally one less child that she had to deal with, one less mouth that she had to feed. Um, I think that she just didn't like that she didn't have that control over me anymore because she would call me and try to tell me you're coming this weekend and I'm like no no I'm not <laughs> no like yes you're still my mom but I'm old enough to make my own decisions now and I'm not I'm not gonna expose myself to that negative space when I don't have to so I ended up stopped going over on the weekends and she, she bounced around from house to house to motels to other people's houses to apartments and then she finally like stayed in one apartment and um, I would go see her here and there and more when my she left my stepdad so after she left my stepdad we kind of started to get a relationship back again but it was never going to be the same it was too it was too estranged there was too much there um, too many issues, things that weren't talked about, and my mom was just never going to change anyway. Um, and then she hid her pregnancy from me for six months and didn't tell me <laughs> until she was like, she literally didn't tell me until she was like seven months pregnant. And my mom is a person who always wears like really baggy clothes, so you couldn't tell. Like I never really, I didn't see her enough to be like, man, what's going on there? Um, so then that kind of put a burden on our relationship. But once my sister was born, you know, I went up to the hospital to see her. I, you know, tried to form a relationship with my sister, all that. But, um, as of right now, I haven't talked to her in about two years and I literally have no regrets. I love that my grandmother took me in and I will forever be thankful for that because I don't know where I would be if it wasn't for my grandma. She definitely did a, so much for me growing up. She didn't have to take care of me. She didn't have to bring me into her house, but she did. And I will forever be grateful for that. Um, it's just uh, like uh, I get speechless when I talk about her because her duty as a grandma, she just went above and beyond that. You know what I mean? Like she she just exceeded the expectations as a grandma and um i enjoyed living with her and i lived with her until i was 19 and then i moved out and um started living with my boyfriend who is now my husband <laughs> um but yeah so that's my story so that's my story time about moving out when i was 13. i hope you guys enjoyed it if you have any questions please you know, feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, I'm going to be doing more story times about stuff in my childhood like this. Um, I really hope that if someone out there is going, is going through the same stuff that I went through, that you're able to find the light at the end of the tunnel and that you're able to make a difference that's going to impact your life for the better and realize that at the end of the day, you have to do what's best for you. And... If someone gets pissed off about it, let them get pissed off. <laughs> so don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment down below and give me a big thumbs up. Share my video videos with your friends and have a great day. I'll see you guys in the next time. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Peyton, and I'm just a girl with a camera who likes to share my story and my life. So if that's something you're interested in, please feel free to hit that subscribe button, give me a big thumbs up, and leave a comment down below. Uh, that would really help me out. I'm trying to start this YouTube channel out right. Um, so yeah, let's get into this today's video. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Peyton, and I'm just a girl with a camera who likes to share my stories and my life. If that's something you're interested in, please feel free to hit that subscribe button, give me a big thumbs up, and leave a comment down below. Today we're gonna be talking about when I moved out of my house when I was 13 years old. So if that's something you're interested in, please 